One day I spent several hours in LEGO worlds creating a habitat for frogs. Turns out they abandon it and just walk away into the endless nothing. I love wildlife in video games. One of my favorite details in a video game was all the different birds in each kingdom of Mario Odyssey. I feel like almost nobody else in the world immediately looked for the birds whenever they entered a new place, but that kind of thing fascinates me in games. But in my cozy slime simulator game Jellyfields, the only living thing to interact with is the jelly. So today we're going to fix that. While we're on the subject, let's start with birds. If you watched the channel for a while, you may remember that I had added birds to Jelly World, and my idea for them here is similar. Since I already drew the birds for Jelly World, I didn't have to do much in terms of art. I already drew a few birds. I drew one that I called the Chickadon. I also drew one I called the Chickadeet, and also one that's kind of like a seagull. And then there's another one that we'll talk about later. When I originally drew them, there was actually a lot of struggling that happened because they are so low pixel count that you have to leave a lot of them to the imagination and i wanted to stylize them a little bit i wanted them to look cute and squishable i think i did a good job in the end but i do remember struggling pretty hard so i might need to make a video about how drawing birds ruined my game <laughs> In game, I added locations that the birds can spawn in, and every once in a while the game will select which bird will spawn based on its rarity, the biome, the time of day, and the weather. Yes, I'm going that in depth with the bird system. I've actually discussed making this bird system for years in my Discord server, which is crazy that I've been wanting to make a bird system in games for years, and I'm just now getting around to actually doing it. The bird just kind of hangs out and chills, but if you put your mouse over them, they'll begin to fly away. When they're flying away, you can click them for a chance to get their feather or a rare item. Originally, I planned for the birds to just drop seeds, but then I thought it would be really cool if they all had an exclusive, like, feather item. I don't know, that just seems cool to me. Like, collecting bird feathers is definitely one of those things that I did as a kid. I would see a bird feather on the ground and be like, whoa, that's so cool. So I kind of wanted to tap into that little bit of childhood wonder for this game. Because childhood wonder, make brain happy, and this game is meant to make brain happy. One of the most fun things I did with Jelly World was create this robot bird. The idea was that during rainy or stormy weather, this bird had a super rare chance of spawning and it would drop this item, the Jolt. This item has been in Jellyfield since the very beginning and it is the only legendary quality item in the game so far. Currently, you can get it as a level up reward from the Golden Luna Pond but I think we should add this robot bird into the game and make it drop the jolt. Before working on the robot bird, I actually decided to update the sprite for the Chickadon and then moved on to the robot bird. It's basically a recolor of the Chickadon, but I thought it would be really cool if its feet were red and blue like electrical wires, kind of like how you see in the movies, and I think it turned out really cool. I imported it into Unity and then I set all of the settings for the sprite import things, and then I took the Chickadon I already made, duplicated duplicated it and basically just reskinned it to look like the robot bird and then I made the robot bird drop the jolt. Now we have the robot bird in the game and it drops the jolt which is awesome. This is the Build-A-Bear Sobble that my fiance got me when we took a trip to the mall and she's like oh let's go to Build-A-Bear and then we go into Build-A-Bear and then she's like Here's the Sobble, let's get it. I love it, it's great. If you know me, I love Sobble and I'm adding it to my collection of the Sobble line Pokemon related things. The biome that we're working on is called Friendly Fields and the goal for it is to be farm themed. When I think of wildlife I could add to a farm, my first thought is definitely a turtle. Okay, I know a lot of you probably thought like a cow or a pig, but let me explain. In another game I'm working on called Luna Lane, there's this candle turtle called the Taper Shell. It is a really cool enemy in that game, and once I created it, I decided that the world I'm making should be full of elemental turtles. The Taper Shell has the power of fire, and I'm wondering what element I could use to have a turtle for in a farm. At first, I was thinking water, 
but then I got a better idea. I came up with a dirt elemental turtle called the natural shell and I think it looks great. When I first started drawing it, I honestly was worried that it wouldn't turn out the way I thought it would, but once I finished the design, I knew people would enjoy it. Adding the little crop growing on its head is really what brings it together for me though. In game, it walks around and sometimes gets covered in mud. When it's muddy, I created a dirt particle effect that plays when it walks for some bonus fun points. Basically just some brown particles that go baboing. But <laughs> something that I really enjoy about making games, especially in Unity, is the particle effects. You can make some really, really fun particles in Unity. And I did just make some fun particles in Unity. So ha, gotcha. I also added a new mud ground tile in the area that it walks around so you can see where it's getting the mud from. I think the tile looks really cool and it sets the mood and the environment a little bit better. Also, a little fun fact, this tile is pretty much exactly based on the like farmed land tile from jelly world i don't know what i'm trying to say right now you get what i mean but what purpose does this muddy turtle serve in the game well when it gets muddy you can click on it and you'll clean it off and you'll get some experience i don't know just it's kind of like you're helping out the wildlife it's covered in mud and you're gonna clean it off and then it's just gonna go run around in the mud and get covered again i don't know it just feels like you're kind of having a connection between you and a thing that isn't the jelly and to me that adds a lot to the game also you get experience and who doesn't want experience <laughs> to further enhance the fun of the natural shell i made it so that you can put items on its back and it'll carry them around when it flips around though it gets a little bit funky i contemplated if making something as simple as that would really benefit the game but small things like that honestly make it feel like a living world which is good because that's that's what i want the game to feel like i have planned bug catching and fishing for the game and you're probably thinking that those would also count as wildlife but once i add those in in, I'm gonna make a separate devlog dedicated to that. In the meantime, I'll give you a sneak peek at one of the bugs I already have drawn. It's a blue little beetle fella and I think it turned out great. One of the crazy things about the game is that all of the sprites for items are now 9x9, nine nine, so drawing things like bugs isn't very easy. But hey, I think I did a pretty good job, honestly. I've also never drawn a bug before. I'm gonna count that as a win for me. If you would like to support an independent game developer in following his dreams and get videos early and exclusive weekly content, consider becoming a member with the join button or the link in the description. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.